Hello there everybody, I'm Daryl Griffiths. Welcome to my latest video film review. I hope you're doing very well. Today I'll be tackling one of the films that I had the pleasure of seeing this past weekend at the BFI London Film Festival. It is from a director that I have been a huge fan of over the years and it is Xavier Dolan's It's Only the End of the World. After Mommy, which I deemed a masterpiece, it had such a profound effect on me at the time. Uh, of seeing it and it has stuck with me ever since so naturally I was very excited to see what he could bring to the table with such a cast at his disposal Marion Cotillard, Vincent Cassell, Leah Sadu, just to name a few this has been one of my most anticipated for a while so let's dissect Xavier Dolan his career has been remarkable so far he's on his seventh film and he's under the age of 27 and the quality has been so consistent and I mean what am I doing with my life at the age of 26 in comparison it's a work rate that you just have to admire um, but the film itself it is based on a Jean-Luc Lagasse play I hope I've pronounced that correctly and it deals or revolves around Gaspard Ulliel's writer Louis and he normally, of course, as a respective writer and some of you guys as well, sometimes getting our thoughts out there, it's more therapeutic and cathartic to write it down and then send it off uh, into the world and for people to read it and really try and grasp who you are as a person. But sometimes in certain situations, it just can't do. And in Louis's case, he's terminally ill. And he has been away from his family for the duration of 12 years and he is prompted to go back to his familial home and immersed once again with these very tortured very hateful characters and we have Vincent Cassell's powder keg of a character in Antoine we have Marion Cotillard's Catherine we have Leah Sadu Suzanne and they're all very much at loggerheads and Natalie's, Natalie Bay's mother figure as well. A trait that has really gone th through the Xavier Dolan back catalogue and they've always been very powerful and layered maternal figures and it's no exception here. And it's the film essentially deals with how Louis tries to come to terms with this period of time that he has not seen them and whether he can sort of connect with them in any way in his final hours and days. Uh, the film itself is pure melodrama. It is just so emotionally exhausting. Uh, it may be for some, it is so intense. But when you are seeing these actors and actresses at work, at such a high level it is utterly compelling and that is credit to Dolan's direction which is so tight and confined and there are so many gorgeous close-ups uh, particularly one of Cassell and this very this deep red tinge to the aesthetic and he's almost ready to lash out and you can see the tears really about to just treacle down his face and it is just such intensity and you just can't take your eyes off the film maybe within the frame and the way Dolan shoots it you could possibly want the frame to open up a little bit further because it's just that intense but that and it may be quite divisive in that respect but I think what Dolan's achieved here once again uh, there's always been melodramatic tendencies to his films in my opinion and but this is where he really just goes for it in that respect and really trying to tap into that subgenre and it is just fantastic the performances Vincent Cassell owns this film for me as Antoine he is just such a hateful sarcastic character but you can't take your eyes off him he it's just such a contrast to the likes of Catherine, especially Marion Cotillard, probably the most softly spoken and the most considered character of the ensemble. And she really tries to connect with Louis on a personal and emotional level. Uh, Gaspar Ulliel, he's very muted in comparison, but 
he's so engaging as a character and the way he feels across paintings and we have these vivid and very effective flashbacks uh from his earlier years while he was in this familial home and he's just terrific here and leah sadu that she's full of angst uh for how this family deals with their issues and their problems and the way they are with each other and you really get a palpable sense of frustration from her as well and it really riffs off very well with the other characters and Natalie Bay's maternal figure again a recurring theme of Dolan's films and she is fantastic she's so naive in a way of of how she tries to put this positive spin on things uh, within the family compared to everybody else who's just so sarcastic and hateful and Louis picks up on it so well in that he doesn't feel like he's wanted there or they feel like they're hiding something in how they feel about Louis um, maybe because of his sexuality as well as his illness which he very much keeps confined and it just makes for such a compelling immersive picture and Dolan's use of music again it's always been a key trait of why I've loved him as a director and he can make something that for most people would be deemed a gimmicky choice he makes it very potent and point and really make it mean something and certain visual motifs as well like here there is the very poignant use of a cuckoo clock and maybe he's trying to pin it into the characters that when you're just so mentally confined uh, within your own thought process and being so hateful and you know just spewing this verbal bile constantly we just get so lost as people and maybe because we're, on, we're running on our own time in a way because this is how we deal with life and we always so confined or we're just throwing everything out there at such a level where people end up wondering what is your issue what is your problem and maybe we just sort of lose track of time and it maybe how precious the commodity is um in a familial sense and it's only the end of the world i have to say had a real effect once again it may not reach the heights of his previous films particularly mommy i mean it was such a tough act to follow that film in my opinion but it's only the end of the world once again is pure melodrama and it solidifies once again why Xavier Dolan for me is one of the most exciting directors around. It, I can understand the division, uh, particularly from Cannes because it won the Grand Prix prize and it had a very polarising uh, consensus there. But I truly believe that if you like something that's just so compelling in its dramatics and so confined in its one setting essentially i think you'll have much appreciation for xavier dolan's it's only the end of the world so that is a wrap on my review of the film i sincerely hope you've enjoyed it uh you can subscribe to my youtube channel below uh, which would mean a great deal this video review will also be going on we make movies on weekends where you can find most of my reviews now uh you can check out the site at www.wemakemoviesonweekends.com and you can like our Facebook page and our Twitter page as well. The next review will be I, Daniel Blake, directed by Ken Loach. Oh, I sincerely hope you can tune in for that one. But that is a wrap. I've been Daryl Griffiths and I will speak to you soon, guys. Take care and thanks for watching this review. See you later.